Uh, I'm glad to be talking to you this evening in this uh, session or setting of a profession meets faith. As you know, my name, you know me, my name is Father Charles Misula. And uh, my profession is a priest. So for me, in my day-to-day -day work, I constantly encounter people in my, I mean, when I'm exercising or practicing my own faith. Okay. But today, what I want to share with you, uh, since I've been ordained four years ago, uh, what has been really powerful for me as a priest, or what I, not I enjoy, but at least I find to be so meaningful, is first of all celebrating the sacrament of the Eucharist or the Mass. But most importantly, what really takes me now outside the walls of the church to the real life is when I also celebrate the sacrament of the sick. This one takes me to the hospitals or to the nursing homes or to hospice or to places where I can meet with the family and most important those people who are sick and they need the sacrament of a holy anointing. There have been cases of where I was personally touched and I could not uh, explain that uh, was it just me or some uh, a higher power working through me. For example, I remember of where I was called to go to see somebody who was sick. I was there, I did the prayers and I also I did mean the sacrament of holy anointing. This person, before I reached there, I was told that he was really struggling, he was really in pain and uh, struggling. Just having difficulty, and the, the family normally once they see somebody who is on that kind of condition, they know that uh, he or she may not be going to live longer. So what do they do? As Catholics, normally that's when we are asked to call for a priest so that they can come and anoint this particular person. We know in the sacrament of holy anointing, first of all, it strengthens the sick person to endure the hardships which they are going through that particular time. And also, let's say they are called or promoted, promoted to eternal glory, then their sins will have been forgiven. Then they will go to heaven directly because through the sacrament of holy anointing, our sins are forgiven. That's why as Catholics, it's very, it's very, very important to do that sacrament of holy anointing, to call for a priest so that he can come and administer that particular sacrament. Later on, people have shared with me, especially the family members, that uh, when we, uh, when I had administered that uh, sacrament, the person was calm and peaceful. Some of them had, uh, they went straight away and passed away, but at least they were in peace. And uh, you can tell that uh, there are there was peace in this particular person. So you can see the efficacy of that sacrament. That once you administer that sacrament, it's actually God working through a priest or a minister in that sacrament. And it is also an assurance that our family who are going to pass away, they are going to pass away in grace that they are also going to be received in heaven. It's an assurance, first of all, for the, for the, for the, for the family that their person whom they loved so dear and has left them is now in peace with God. So for me to celebrate, it will be in those situations of where I can bring that meaning to that individual also, to their family. It gives me that sense of satisfaction and also a sense of, um, I don't want to use, use the word joy because I don't want to see somebody pass away for sure, but at least for, for doing that as a, as a priest, at my, from, at my capacity as a priest, it just gives me that sense of, um, satisfaction that I, I am just a servant of God and I, I have done what I am supposed to do. But the most important now will be for the family uh, no, to know that their relative actually received their last uh, rites and has been in, and has passed safely and in peace to God our Creator. Um, as I said, there are a couple of examples which uh, I have um, heard or people have shared with me. But a, a couple of which really touched me is where I can, when I am called personally to go and administer that sacrament. I remember one day 
I was also called to go to St. Matthew's uh, Hospice there. So when I was there, I kind of prayed with the family and I also administered the Sacrament of Holy Anointing. This particular person, before I reached there, he was really agitated. He was uh, struggling and you can tell this particular person, this particular individual was close to, to go. But after I had administered the sacrament, he was calm and he spent the whole of the evening, of that evening, peaceful and eventually he passed in, in peace in, in that night. Like, uh, when I, I was told that he had passed away, I was sad in one way, but I was so relieved that uh, he is no longer in pain, he's no longer suffering. And for the family, they were also happy that at this finally he is no longer suffering and he passed it in peace. So as I'm saying, it's such a, a powerful and a profound sacrament. It's not uh, easy to see somebody going through that pain, through that uh, difficulty. But uh, when, you, when we have administered, when I have administered that sacrament, it's an assurance that a particular person now, his soul is saved. And also he's strengthened to fight against the devil who might be waiting for his soul at that uh, critical moment of their life. So for me, just to do that, I guess I'm saying, it gives me that sense of satisfaction as a priest. And I, I do it genuinely because when I, I'm called, we normally live immediately. You don't take time to wait because you never know how long that particular individual live. So. We normally live immediately and go to admit the last sacrament. So for me, it's a powerful symbol of faith in the sense that uh, who am I? I do ask myself that God will work through me and through imparting that blessing and the grace of this particular person. But it happens. So as I'm saying, there are certain things which just happen, which are beyond my understanding or I cannot explain. But I do believe God works through his ministers, and I just happen to be one of them. And I say it's such a, somehow a satisfaction to me to be able to do that genuinely, not because it's a, just a profession, but that's what I'm, what I'm called to do. But when I do it, I also do it with reverence and respect, and also taking my time to be with their family in those uh, critical moments. I'm say we as Catholics we do believe in that sacrament. The people who receive it at that time is strengthened, and they also their sins are forgiven. And if we happen, if they happen to die, then we know that they're in heaven. I know one family who shared with me that she had worried so much about the passing of her mom, and she wanted to have a sign. So one night. I remember it was Friday evening and it was so gloomy, a lot of crowd. Then I, I was called like in the afternoon on that particular day and I went to administer the sacrament of holy anointing. And, I, and the person died, and the mother of that lady died on that particular night. Then she was sharing with me when I went for the work that uh, she had prayed for a sign to, to know that her mom would be okay. So on that night evening, despite of the rain and the cloud, that it, she kind of opened her window and looked outside. That it, miraculously, the sky was uh, now kind of open. She, she could see a star, uh, two stars there, very bright stars. Now for her, she interpreted it that it was uh, her parents looking down on her, smiling. So when I heard that after administering the sacrament of holy anointing, I said, you know what? God works in his own ways and he, he manifests himself in the manner and the way that we can understand. I kind of agreed to what she was saying, but I also knew that maybe since she had prayed for her sign with faith, she was rewarded with that kind of sign which assured her that her parents were happily together in heaven. Uh, well, I think briefly that's what I can share about him. Uh, my experience, especially in administering the sacrament of holy anointing. Do you, do you have any tips for us about um, what are, you know, do you have any advice for, for us as the audience? I think first of all, people are always afraid to call for a priest that maybe after administering the sacrament of holy anointing, the person will die. No. 
it's actually meant for healing and some people do survive and get healing, get healed. So we should not be afraid to call for a priest when he, you know that there is someone who is sick in the family because the first intention is, is to strengthen the sick person so that they can endure the hardship and pain at that time. And we are also reminded as, as Catholics that we can also bring our pain and suffering to that one of Christ. If Christ was able to suffer and die for us at the cross, we can also participate in our suffering now at that moment with those sufferings of Christ. So we should not be afraid to call for a priest. It's not like maybe say death certificate, the death, death, death certificate is not, but it, it's just a preparation. In case you are called, you are ready. So we should not be afraid of the sacrament of holy anointing. Yes. Father, this is the first time I've ever heard that the sacrament of holy anointing uh, forgives sins. Yes. I mean, is that the same as, are you including confession in there, or is it just automatic? That I, it the is, sins are forgiven without being uh, confessed to you? Yeah, yeah <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. So, so, most of the people, they're in that critical moment that they are not here able to express themselves. So they are given the benefit of um, that uh, since it's the it's got the desire to, 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 to save everybody and at least their family have taken the initiative to call for a priest. So when we are the that the sacrament of holy anointing, their sins are forgiven. But if they happen to to survive and get healed, they will be still required to go <coughs> sorry, to go back to confess if they had committed some grievous sin. But if they pass, we do believe that their sins are being forgiven through that uh, power of uh, strength of the sacrament of holy anointing. Yes. So. Can you do something like a holy anointing, say for example, if you were in an emergency situation, say a plane crash or something like that? Could you yes. bless the whole airplane? Or That's what we always advise to do. Like let's say we are traveling on a plane, <coughs> or a ship and you know that nobody will survive, we do give that general absolution of where you will just say, you know, the prayer, if you are able to say the whole prayer, I will just simply, you know, I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or you say the whole prayer if you have time to do that. Or just say the last thing, uh, uh, absolution, that I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, okay, it's not so much us as uh, human beings, but it's up to God because uh, it's God ultimately who will judge us. So it depends on how, how we have lived. But uh, we as ministers or as human beings, we just have to do our part. So that's what we try to do. Yeah. Yes, Mary Ann. Father, what if the person has already passed away, can they still be anointed? No, not really, but it, uh, if it has been like, scientifically really, uh, proved that he, he is dead, just say some prayers. But if you don't know, the, or the doctor has not uh, issued the certificate that he is dead, you can still do the sacrament of holy anointing. Yeah. yeah, because as you know, human beings I think, die in stages, maybe some, some, some organs start failing one after the other, then eventually everything it shuts down, so it say, unless the doctor has issued their, their certificate already that this person is already dead, then you can just say, say the prayers. But if there is no uh, doctor or scientific certification that the person is dead, you can just go ahead and uh, anoint the person. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, Jim. When you were younger, did you ever have an understanding that or an interest in anointing of the sick? Or is this something that you learned on the job that you really enjoy? When I was young, I remember I grew up near a hospital and uh, what I was taught, especially in CCD, when I used to go to CCD that day, it was, uh, I mean, even also I listened to that, uh, the, the pediatric, because when I was sick, you came to visit me. That gospel for me touched me. So I grew up with that uh, interest of just going to visit the sick people, you know, bring some calm. And as I say, sometimes I go there when I meet them. I don't go there like so sad. I try to 
go is some kind of smile, just bring a little bit of a, a difference in, into their perspective at that particular time. Because I also realize now it's time. When you go to see somebody who is sick, but you look at them and you, and you appear so sad or scared, you kind of make them feel that they have no hope. But if you go there, even if you know that they are really sick and suffering, you kind of keep on encouraging them, you know, maybe tease them a little bit. Then I think they somehow also know that hey, they will be fine. Even when you, you speak of God, God will be with you. Or God is with you. God will help you. They do believe that. But I remember it was here at the Lutheran General some few years ago, before I even came here to St. Paul. I was working there. Then I met a, a, a lady with a back uh, uh, surgery, and she was a kind of clump with some iron to help us to stay straight. I mean, for me, I used to go to meet her there, to meet her in the morning, and every time I always see her, she always smiled. And she was Jewish, as a matter of fact, not even a Catholic. And she kept on talking about uh, you know, reincarnation and or odd souls, and maybe our soul had met somewhere before, you know. Okay, you kind of listen to those kind of stories, also we share a little bit about you know, our faith. But I guess uh, over time of seeing her for a couple of weeks, uh, she will recover and uh, I mean, she even, we still keep in touch even today. Uh, just, uh, those were the, like one of those moments of where I just wonder, but I also know it's not my, my, my power. I just give it to God, it's God's glory, it's God's uh, will. So. I don't know. I think God gives us that uh, grace or that uh, charism of touching others in a certain way which we may never know. But if we are patient and uh, sensitive, I think we can bring more healing to others just by our presence, genuine presence. For me, that's how I look at it like that. Yes, sir. Do you remember the first time you anointed the blessed person? Does it kind of stand out in your memory? Or? Yeah, that's the one which I, I shared. That I, when I was called at the hospital, I found this, uh, it was at a hospice at St. Matthew's. When I went there, I mean, I had also that feeling that when I, I anoint somebody, will die. But you, you can see at that time, for one, you <coughs> just want to have to know that. The family, we have seen a lot of suffering, first of all, to this particular individual. Mm -hmm. They are like, a, they just don't know what to do. But uh, what remains now is just our prayer. that We pray to God, at least God's will at that time be done. And uh, for me, as I'm saying, the sacrament helps to calm the person. Like, for example, this particular person, I know the moment I had finished that now, anointing him, he was calm, he became so peaceful. But before I got there, the family was sharing with me that he was very agitated. And even when he died, they say he died with a smile, mm -hmm. despite of uh, having been like a really struggle. It's like a, his soul was fighting <laughs> against the weak body, you know, as I'm saying. Because the book here says that the book for the sacrament of well anointing, that uh, it helps us to, it strengthens us at that critical time to be able to fight the temptation of the devil who, who is like waiting, lying, waiting for our soul. Mm -hmm. That's why for me, I, from that moment, I started now seeing the efficacy of the power, the strength of the suffering that uh, it really brings that healing, it brings that grace to be strong. And uh, as you are asking about forgiveness, I also knew because this person I was told was not all that like a, a church going person. He had left the church, church a long time ago, but his family still. Uh, Wanted it. Well, one, I mean, when he was sick, he had requested to have a Catholic mass, so he died, and then I, I was called and I did the mass here again. That was my first really anointing, which left really that impression, and uh, it kind of sticks into my memory even now. Yeah. So, thank you.